Hello there folks, my name is Spooks and welcome back to another episode of Box Office Chat. This is the show where I break down the top 5 domestic box office results, see where each movie landed and see how well each movie did. So let's get started. Number 5 was Knock at the Cabin, making 3.9 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of 30 million and a worldwide total of 47 million dollars. So after falling out of the top 5 last weekend and facing a very steep drop of 62%, it was able to rebound and enter the top 5 once again as well as doubling its $20 million budget worldwide, also putting it $3 million away from the $50 million milestone which it'll surely be able to surpass probably by the time this video comes out, so congratulations. So yeah, while this movie is not in a bad shape, I I do feel like this is a bit of a disappointment given M. Night Shyamalan, the early buzz, the very solid marketing before the film. I, I really thought this movie would do better, but no, really, word of mouth has just not been helping this movie out. Audiences are not really connecting with this film, unfortunately. So while yes, it is still technically a box office success, this isn't a flop, it's not doing horribly by any means, it, I do feel like this is a pretty big disappointment overall it could have done better for sure but hey at least it was able to re-enter the top five and make itself a success Number 4 was Puss in Boots The Last Wish, making $5.3 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $166 million and a worldwide total of $422 million. Another solid weekend for Puss in Boots, it had the best hold out of any of the holdovers in the top 5, just dropping 5% from last weekend absolutely incredible it is also just one million dollars behind black adam's entire domestic run to enter the top 10 highest grossing films of the year domestically given where it's at and by the time this video comes out it will surely have already surpassed this milestone job well done there it also surpassed the entire worldwide run of sonic the hedgehog 2 to become the second highest grossing family film of the year worldwide obviously behind minions the rise of grew and in regards to its domestic numbers it is gaining some ground against sonic the hedgehog 2 as it is a little over 30 million away uh from that film's milestone as well we'll see if this movie will be able to surpass it domestically as well as earning the 200 million dollar milestone i've been hearing a lot of rumblings going on saying that there's a chance this movie could get there i'm gonna be honest i'm not sure if that's going to happen uh even with how successful it's been doing i i just feel like that's a bit of a reach but still i wouldn't be surprised if it was able to i mean it's just done so well thus far with very little competition nothing is really in its way and even with the fact that it's available on digital and it's going to be on blu-ray very very soon and yet the film is still doing as well as it is once again shows how much this movie has resonated with audiences people are still rushing out to see this movie despite the fact that the movie came out around christmas and we are almost in march and what people are again are still rushing out to see it so yeah obviously another solid weekend for puss in boots very happy to see this movie doing as well as it has Number 3 was Magic Mike's Last Dance, making $5.4 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $18 million and a worldwide total of $38 million. So this had another interesting theatrical release this weekend, as the film actually expanded expanded from a little over a thousand theaters across the country for its opening weekend to just over 3,000 theaters across the country for its second weekend. I don't know why they didn't decide to do this in the first place, but hey, I'm not David Zaslav. I'm not currently running one of the mo biggest movie studios in Hollywood. I, I, I don't make the, the rules here, but anyways, well, yeah, the film isn't really in the best spot right now there is a bit of a silver lining here worldwide at the very least it is just two million away from surpassing its initial 40 million dollar budget so at the very very least there is that at least they could say they you know 
initially made their budget back and i'm sure it's probably going to at the very least make its budget back domestically we'll see if it can get to the doubling point i feel like it's going to get very very close but just not over it unfortunately but you know once again given the marketing and the horrible theatrical release thus far uh this is probably the best they could hope for and again it's doing significantly better than house party but yeah once again this is just not doing well again i don't know why they decided to give it such a limited release on the first weekend and then just expand it in the second weekend like what what were you trying to accomplish there and also i don't think too many people were aware of that causing the film to uh slip to the third place spot unfortunately we'll see hopefully if more people realize oh it's playing in more theaters i can go watch it maybe that'll help it out but it's still going to need a lot more help than that number two was avatar the way of water making 6.4 million this weekend adding to a domestic total of 657 million and a worldwide total of 2.2 billion dollars so this may surprise you but i was actually surprised by this movie's performance this weekend i was expecting not a devastating drop-off but something bigger than uh what the drop-off was this weekend it actually only dropped 11 percent uh from the previous weekend which given the competition it was facing is pretty admirable and it also pushed its domestic total just a smidge over Jurassic World the first one's uh, domestic total not only to enter the top 10 biggest films of all time domestically but the ninth spot on that all-time chart which is very good we'll see if the movie uh has anything left in its juice there's certainly going to be a lot more competition in the couple weeks so we'll see how it faces off uh, against all that and once again even if it plummets even if it uh leaves the top five very soon it's still one of the biggest movies ever so really nothing's going to change that otherwise yeah overall another solid weekend for avatar the way of water i have really nothing much else to add to this conversation just once again bravo and finally let's end the video off with the number one movie of the weekend which was ant-man and the wasp quantum mania opening with 105 million dollars domestically this weekend and including the holiday numbers that adds to a domestic total of 121 million and a worldwide total of 241 million dollars so let's break down some of the milestones. Obviously, this is the biggest opening weekend for any film in the Ant-Man franchise, topping the $76 million opening for Ant-Man and the Wasp back in 2018. And since we're so early in the year, this is, of course, the biggest opening weekend of the year, topping Megan's $30 million opening back in January, as well as topping Megan as the biggest movie of the year domestically so far. Worldwide, it is at number three behind The Wandering Earth 2 and New river red and thanks to the worldwide totals it has surpassed its 200 million dollar budget very good it's definitely gonna double it worldwide very soon but yeah definitely off to a good start for an ant-man movie however i'm not sure if this was the opening marvel was really hoping for as they were billing this as a much bigger film than just another ant-man movie it was the introduction to kang it was the big start to phase five they were really hyping and building this up stupendously and while this is definitely not a bad opening per se, I mean, for crying out loud, it's the biggest movie of the year right now, and obviously biggest opening for an Ant-Man film thus far, I, I do feel like they might be a bit underwhelmed that it wasn't as big as some other MCU films. Again, I wasn't expecting it to be as big as something like Black Panther or Doctor Strange. Hell, I mean, this pretty much met my expectations. Uh, but yeah, I do feel like given those things, it was probably a bit of an underwhelming opening for Marvel. And I do believe that maybe reviews did hurt it a little. Reviews were pretty bad for an MCU film. This is like the second lowest rated film on Rotten Tomatoes. And I am also very worried about its legs. I do think this weekend it should do 
okay, I guess, given its competition, which we'll get to in a moment. But after that, we are in March, and March has so many big movies, and I do feel like a lot of those movies are going to steal the spotlight from Ant-Man. And given the really mixed reception from audiences as well, it got a B on cinema score, a second only to Eternals uh, to ever get a B on cinema score in the MCU. That is very concerning, so we'll just have to wait and see where this movie goes from here. It's definitely off to a good start for an Ant-Man movie. It met my expectations for sure, but I'm very concerned for if it will meet reach the height that Marvel is hoping for, as well as some other MCU films. But yeah, you know, Again, this is not a terrible opening by any means, but I do think many people were expecting a bit better. And those were the top five domestic box office results for this weekend, but we're not quite done yet as we got another week ahead of us and new movies hitting theaters. And this weekend we have one new major wide release. I do know that Jesus Revolution also comes out this weekend, but given the lack of marketing and buzz I've seen for it, I don't think it's really going to impact the top five all that much. Maybe it gets at the like on the lower end of it, but that's really all I can see for it. So let's move on to the other new wide release, which is Cocaine Bear, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's tough to take in all of this cinematic awesomeness that i am currently bestowing upon you but let me leave you with this basically this is a horror comedy loosely based off of a true story in which a bear ingested a whole brick of cocaine only in real life the bear sadly died shortly after whereas in the movie it gets so <clears throat> enthusiastic that it goes on a killing spree this is probably the biggest risk any studio has given to the movie going audience during the time i have been doing this show and i am all here for it and there are many ways i can see this movie overperforming in all honesty the marketing has been fantastic i've been seeing tons and tons of advertising for it and the little publicity stunts they've done for it like that parody of awards campaign commercials they did back when the academy award nominations went out to the little drug psa parody they did a couple weeks ago it's all been great and the buzz is super strong i've been hearing no non-stop talking about this movie people have been talking about this movie everywhere i go whether it be online or in person just everyone i know has been talking about this movie and while reviews aren't out first reactions uh well a handful of them are and so far i've heard a lot of positive things about it they're small numbers for sure they're not as big as something like a marvel movie but for the little i've seen they've been pretty positive but the downside here is that well it's a movie called cocaine bear and i'm worried if there's going to be a, that many people going out to rush to see this movie even if it's better than ant-man because believe it or not there is still that portion of the public who don't see this movie as stupid awesomeness and just see it as stupid and go i don't know about that and also this movie does have a bigger budget than i was expecting it to it is said to be around 35 to 39 million dollars that is definitely quite a lot bigger than what i was expecting it, it is said that the majority of the budget was given to the vfx team for the animation and special effects on the bear which you know i'm here for most of the budget going to the vfx artists but yeah this movie is definitely going to need a lot more than what i expected it to to be uh, box office success so hopefully it will be able to exceed those expectations given the positives i've said but we'll see how well this movie does as well as the rest of the movies that land in the top five on the next box office chat and that's going to do it for this week's episode of box office chat what did you all think of the results were you satisfied unsatisfied comment down below and let me know if you like this video hit the like button if you like this channel hit the subscribe button follow me on all the social media links right there and until next time everyone stay sharp